All right, so now let's make our little puffs. So you'll grab your four and a half inch square and your five inch square. Now you're gonna line up the corner. So this top and this side, you're gonna line up so that they are even. Now we'll just sew a quarter of an inch a little ways down. And then at this point, you're gonna take your bottom and line it up with the bottom of that backing piece, which is smaller, so it's going to have this uh, kind of a bunchy part. So just make a little bit of a pleat with it and sew right over the top. Now, when you get about a quarter of, a quarter of an inch away from the seam, the edge, put the needle down into the fabric, lift up your presser foot and turn the fabric. So you're gonna go down the next side, so just go a little way. Then you're gonna take your bottom of the fabric, line it up with the backing and then make your little pleat somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have to be like exact, don't measure. It's just somewhere in the middle, make a little bit of a pleat so that it's flat. And so right over the top of it, now put your needle down, lift your presser foot and turn your fabric again. Put the presser foot down and we'll just do this one more time, lining up the bottom of the fabric making a pleat somewhere in the middle and sewing over the whole thing. This is where we're going to stop at this point. We're going to leave this side open so that we can fill it. And we'll just continue making those um, over and over. Um, there's another way you can do it. If you would like to chain stitch them, that's another option. So start out the same way, lining up the top, sew a little bit down, and then once again, line up your bottom edge of your fabric with the backing, and make a little bit of a pleat. Now, instead of turning at this point, we'll just do the next one. And we'll just do a bunch of those just one side of a bunch of the blocks. I wanna do a different color. It doesn't really matter at this point what color you do or what order, because once we get all of our little blocks done, we're going to lay them out into a pattern that we like. So you could chain stitch 10 or 20 or even all of them if you wanted. Um, just for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna stop at three just to show you the next step. So you sewed this side, so basically you just turn it as if you had pivoted it. And you're just gonna sew down the next side on all of those blocks that you just did the first side on. Okay, so this is the one I did, and I'm gonna put that on the top. Line up the bottom, make a little pleat in the middle. It's actually easier, I think, to get it started. Sew a little ways on before you start doing this, just because then it's in place and you don't have to sliding it under the needle like I did on the last one. just continue to chain stitch that side of however many you had done and then you'll do the third side just basically turn it and do that third side
So then just clip them, separate them apart, and then you could continue to chain stitch or you can do it uh, one by one, whichever way you prefer. It doesn't really matter. And maybe you get bored of one way, you just do the other way because there's a lot of these to make. Um, the next step will be, um, once these are all made, we will be laying them out on the floor into a pattern. Um, I'm just going to be doing a random pattern, trying to keep you know darks and lights somewhat separated so that there's not a whole bunch of darks together and a whole bunch of light fabrics together. Um, just arrange them on the floor and then we will stack them up and start sewing them into columns and stuffing them. So Okay, so we'll just begin sewing. This is the top. The opening is here on the right. We'll grab the second piece, the opening on the right again, then we'll just flip. We'll sew just right over this seam right here. So there we have our first piece, and then we'll just continue this through the whole stack, just adding to the bottom, make sure that the opening is on the right at this point. So try to kind of make it so that it's flat right here, and we'll put these right sides together, and then we'll just sew along that seam that's already there. We'll just continue all the way down. So I'll grab the next one in our stack, orient so that the hole is on the right. Um, just so you don't have any tucks, just make sure that, that those edges are just kind of flat where you're going to be sewing. There's a lot of bulky fabric in there and you just don't want to get that caught in the seam. Okay, so I have my first column or row all sewn together. I'm just going to take my sticky note and pin it to the top piece. Um, and then at this point, I'm going to sew all of the rows together, um, keeping them labeled as I go. And then after that, then we'll stuff them and sew them all together. Okay, so we'll just grab a stuff, a handful of stuffing, and it's a little trickier to stick it in with the sewing machine there. Probably don't need quite that much. Shove it in. Just want to make sure it's about the same fullness. All of the puffs should be about the same. 
So you just shove it all in and Okay, and then you're going to sew along, making a little bit of a pleat on this side. So just kind of pinch it over like that, a quarter of an inch, and sew down. There we go. And then we'll get to the next spot. Add in some more stuffing. shoved in there good and then we'll make our little pleat kind of pull it so it's straight and make a little bit of a pleat and sew right over it oh, and my thread just broke I'll just re-thread it shared much about this new machine that I got yet but I'm really liking it decided to upgrade um, it has a bigger neck here that I really like for quilting and it has a needle threader which I've never had before and it's pretty cool okay so we'll move on get another handful of stuffing make our little pleat and just continue on until the whole row is done. So I've got rows one and two sewn together. Now I'm going to be adding row three. Now you want to lay it out so that your opening is on the right. And you're going to flip it up so it's right sides together. This side is the side I just finished sewing. So it used to be the open side of row two. So line them up together and you're just going to sew the front to the back. So just line it up together and we'll just get started here. Quarter inch seam allowance and just kind of try to push that batting away from the seam. Now I kind of like to work in sections a block at a time. So since there's all this uh, batting in the way, the seams don't necessarily line up um, easily, so just kind of shove it until it does, um, and then sew over it. Okay, so I did that section, so I'll just get this one, and I'll line up the two seams as best that I can. Um, make sure that that bottom piece gets caught in the seam. So it's kind of a pain, but it's not too hard. 
to do. It's just kind of, that batting just makes it a little tricky. You could, if you feel it less, it's easier. That one had a little bit less I could feel in it. Um, but I also feel like that as it's used, the batting will kind of flatten out. So I wanted to fill it as full as I could so that over time it doesn't just completely flatten out. So there's kind of a balance there. Okay, so then we have our third row and we'll just continue to stuff and sew. So I have the quilt all put together and I have it laid out on the backing. So I just have, this is what the back's going to look like. Just kind of, you can see all the seams. And then I have this fabric, which I absolutely love. Um, what you want to do is cut it out about four inches bigger all the way around the quilt. And we'll trim that off later, um, but then it's just best practice to do just so as the fabric may shift here and there, it's not too short on one side or the other. Um, at this point, I'm going to take some pins and I'm going to pin the, the front to the back kind of at some points. I'm not going to do every point, but just kind of evenly throughout the quilt, pin the top to the back. So you can see I've just kind of randomly placed some pins. Here and there. So for this, I like to use these special safety pins that are made especially for this. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a bend in it, and that's just so that as you scoop under the fabric to pin it, it just kind of scoops it all up in, and then you can secure it, and it just makes it so much easier. So I recommend getting those if you can, and then we will start sewing the back to the quilt. Oh, I'm going to do a batting in between, but the the quilt is pretty sturdy and heavy, and I didn't feel like it really needed the batting like I originally thought it might, so I'm just gonna not do an extra batting. We've got plenty of fluff in there from the polyfill. So to quilt this quilt, originally I was going to sew along all the seams, um, but I realized that it was just too puffy for my sewing machine to get in all the grooves. So what I decided to do is to just tie it and I'm using some embroidery thread and I'm just doing a real simple tie on the back side. So from the back side, I'm going to go up into this corner right here. Pull it through, but not all the way. So let me show you the back. You can see right here, there's your little tail. You want to have maybe that much or so hanging out. Then you're going to cross over to here. Basically, the front half is gonna look like a little X. So we'll go down, then we'll come up right here. And then down in the opposite corner diagonal, opposite square, and we're going to flip it to the back, and we're going to tie. So basically I just do a square knot, so right over left, and then left over right. And then I just do it twice. So another right over left, left over right. And then I'll just trim the extra. 
just like about like that. And that's all I do.